You remember that time President Trump had the demerity to question the IQ of a woman of color, Maxine Waters, one of his biggest critics in the House? She is a low IQ individual, Maxine Waters. I said it the other day. I, I mean, honestly, she's somewhere in the mid 60s, I believe that. This, of course, caused people like Jeffrey Tubin, the legal analyst on CNN, to call President Trump a, wait for it, racist. Just how about this Maxine Waters stuff over and over again, low IQ? How racist, racist is that? Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on, let's just be honest about this. How many black people does the president have to attack in these terms? I mean, he's always like, whether it's NFL football players or, you know, the UCLA basketball players. I mean, come on. Is it a coincidence that he calls a senior black legislator low IQ? I mean, it's revolting. And we should just be clear about what's going on here. Oh, the phone. Didn't Maxine Waters just question the intelligence of Dr. Ben Carson, the man who heads up HUD, also a person of color? I sent him a letter and he sent me a letter claiming that I had no manners, etc. And I basically said to my staff, I really don't have time to be bonded with somebody who does not know the difference between REO and OEO. This guy just doesn't have the background, the capability, the intelligence to do the job. He doesn't know what he's doing, end of quote. The House Judiciary Committee's hearing that former White House counsel Don McGahn skipped wasn't the only hearing that got a lot of attention Tuesday. Housing and Urban Development Secretary Ben Carson appeared before the House Oversight Committee and appeared unfamiliar with a certain real estate term. I am very... Do you know what an REO is? An Oreo? R? No, not an Oreo. An R-E-O. R-E-O. Real estate? What's the O stand for? E organization owned real estate owned. <laughs> Whoa! Did Maxine Waters, a social major at Cal State University, question the intelligence of Dr. Ben Carson, the former head of neurological pediatric surgery at Johns Hopkins, a man who graduated from Yale undergraduate and University of Michigan <laughs> Medical School? Oh yes, she did. Now, can we calm down a little bit here? Donald Trump frequently calls people stupid. People are laughing at us all over the world. They think we're stupid, and we are. I mean, we're being led by stupid people. We're being led by people that don't have a clue they're incompetent. But how dare President Trump question the IQ of his most incendiary critic in Congress, Ms. Waters. Let's make sure we show up wherever we have to show up. And if you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. And you tell them they're not welcome anymore, anywhere. Sometimes, you know, President Trump calls white women, like Nancy Pelosi, stupid. So she's either got one of two problems. She's either really stupid, okay? Or she's really lost it, or maybe there's a certain dishonesty in this, I'm like. Sometimes white men, as in President Trump, complained about leaked cables written by the former British ambassador to the United States. For that, Trump tweeted the following. The wacky ambassador that the UK foisted upon the United States is not someone we are thrilled with. A very stupid guy. He should speak to his country and Prime Minister May about their failed Brexit negotiation, end of quote. Now let's take a bit of time and take a look at Maxine Waters' record, shall we? She is routinely called one of the most corrupt members of Congress by a left-wing ethics group. In the midst of a national financial catastrophe, Representative Maxine Waters used her position as a senior member of Congress and member of the House Financial Services Committee to prevail upon Treasury officials to meet with one United Bank. She never disclosed that her husband held stock in the bank. This outrageous conduct has led Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington to include the Congresswoman as one of the most corrupt members of Congress. End of quote. Well, we all know what happened next. She played the race card and poof, the investigation went supernova.
But that didn't stop the same group from naming Maxine Waters as one of the most corrupt members of Congress in 2005, 2006, 2009, 2011, and 2017. Now, in 1992, she called the Los Angeles riots a rebellion, and she bellowed, no justice, no peace. She defended the looters. There were mothers who took this as an opportunity to take some milk, to take some bread, to take some shoes. Maybe they shouldn't have done it, but the atmosphere was such that they did it. They were not crooks. One lady said her children didn't have any shoes, and she saw those shoes there, a chance for all of her children to have new shoes. Gee, damn it, it was such a tearjerker. I might have gone in and taken them for her myself. End of quote. <laughs> really? Maxine Waters might have gone in there and taken some shoes too. I don't think so. Not when you're living in a McMansion like this. And remember the time she told those CEO oil executives because of their alleged price gouging, she was going to socialize their businesses. I think she was looking for the word nationalize, but it just didn't come to her. And the $5 will look like a very low price in the years to come if we are prohibited from finding new reserves, new opportunities to increase supplies. And guess what this liberal would be all about? This liberal will be all about socializing, uh, um, would be about basically taking over and the government running all of your companies. Now, on to Ms. Waters' conspiracy theory on how the CIA put drugs in the inner city, a theory that has been debunked by the Washington Post, the New York Times, and the LA Times. Here's what a frontline PBS expose found about the reporter who broke the bombshell story. His name is Gary Webb. Webb later agreed in an interview that there is no hard evidence that the CIA as an institution or any of its agent employees carried out or profited from drug trafficking. The IG report cleared the CIA of complicity with the inner city crack cocaine trade. It refuted the charges that CIA officials knew that their Nicaraguan allies were dealing drugs. End of quote. But where was Maxine Waters' concern for drugs in the inner city when she effectively called off a local federal DEA probe of a drug dealer who happened to be a friend of her husband. A local DEA agent said that the interference worked and the search was called off. As reported by the Dallas Morning News, quote, the Justice Department in Washington turned their backs on a good agent and a good investigation. It appears that the object was to get them to stop their investigation and it appears that it worked, end of quote. And then there's this one. In 1973, a former Black Panther named Joanne Chesimar was convicted of murdering a New Jersey state trooper. She remains on the top 10 list of fugitives wanted by New Jersey. She escaped from prison, fled to Cuba where she is right now. Maxine Waters wrote Castro a letter, I kid you not, claiming that she is a persecuted victim of injustice, compared her to Martin Luther King and urged her not to send her back. I kid you not. <laughs> Remember the time? As head of the House Financial Services Committee, she grilled banking CEOs on rising college debt, unaware that they had gotten out of that business almost 10 years earlier. Thank you. Today, there are more than 44 million Americans that owe, this is student loan crisis, 1.56 trillion in student loan debt. Last month, this committee received testimony that last year, 1 million student loan borrowers <coughs> defaulted, which is on top of the 1 million borrowers who defaulted the year before. What are you guys doing to help us with the student loan debt? Who would like to answer first? Mr. Monaghan, Big Bang. Uh, we stopped making student loans in 2007 or so. Oh, so you don't do it anymore, Mr. Corbett? We exited student lending in 2009. Mr. Diamond? When the government took over student lending in 2010 or so, we stopped doing all student lending. Uh, thank you. What about small business? Uh, you Kind of a little detail one might expect the chair of the House Financial Services Committee to know, isn't it? But let's get back to Mr. Tubin. How racist, racist is that? Right. So let's summarize where we are right now. When a white male Republican like Trump criticizes a white male like the former British diplomat, that's just hardball. 
When a white male Republican like Trump criticizes a white female like Nancy Pelosi, that's sexist. And when a white male Republican like Trump criticizes a black female like Maxine Waters, that's racism. And when Maxine Waters criticizes a black man like Dr. Ben Carson, well, that's hardball again. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. I'm Larry Elder, and this has been The Larry Elder Show for Epic Times. I'll see you next time.